Hello everyone, welcome to this module on connectivity to on-premises networks. My name is Rohit Rahi and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud infrastructure team. So until now, we have talked about virtual cloud network and we have looked primarily at creating an internet gateway and a NAT gateway. If you recall from my uh, previous module on virtual cloud network, we had a couple of demos, one on internet gateway and the other one on a NAT gateway. Uh, and we looked at things like reserved public IP, ephemeral public IP, etc. So we, we definitely looked uh, in in quite uh, quite a lot of details on how you can connect uh, to the public internet, right? Either using uh, internet gateway or a NAT gateway. There are two more options which we really didn't discuss in a lot of details in the previous module on virtual cloud network. And these options are around VPN Connect and Fast Connect. So what do I mean by VPN Connect? VPN Connect is basically uh, an option where you connect two different sites using IPsec uh, protocol. So uh, it's, we'll, we'll look into more details. And there are two main options which are available here. The first is an OCI managed VPN service, which is offered for free. So you really don't pay for anything uh, except the underlying resources. And then the second option is you can run your own software VPN. Uh, if you have a Linux VM, uh, you could install your own software like Libreson and you could run it yourself. But remember the first option here, the OCI managed VPN service is offered for free. It's a standard VPN between two different uh, sites. Uh, one site being your uh, Oracle Cloud uh, environment, other site being the on, your on-premises environment. The third option we have uh, is Fast Connect. Fast Connect, as the name uh, specifies here, gives you this consistent fast network performance uh, and you can get uh, support speeds of one Gbps and 10, and 10 Gbps increments. Uh, and the whole idea of a Fast Connect is it is a private connection. So think about this as you having your own uh, high occupancy vehicle lane uh, in the internet. So your traffic doesn't go through the internet. You get your own private dedicated connectivity. Uh, that's number one. And then number two, uh, like I said, the name specifies, you get really fast, consistent performance. So you can go 10 Gbps and even higher uh, if you want. So, and then of course there's an SLA around that. So the first option, public internet, we looked into the previous uh, module on virtual cloud network. In this particular module, we are going to look in more details around VPN and Fast Connect. So before we get into, into, into the details, let's look at some of the basics of VPN, right? VPN basically uh, uses, you know, using a public network, you make end-to-end -end connection between two private networks in a secure fashion using a standard protocol like uh, IPsec, right? So this is basically how the VPN works. You have two different networks here. There's a private network one, private network two, uh, uh, and they want to create a connection, end-to-end -end connection over an unsecure uh, channel like an internet uh, uh, and, and using VPN, uh, they could do that. Uh, now, what are some of the key characteristics we talk about, right? The first thing in a VPN is this thing called a tunnel. A tunnel is nothing but a way to deliver packets through the internet uh, to, to RFC 1918 addresses, meaning private network addresses here. Uh, there is authentication uh, where basically you have to uh, authenticate who you are. The, the really important piece here is encryption. Packets need to be encrypted so they cannot be sniffed over the public internet. So the packets can come unencrypted here, uh, but right as they enter this tunnel, they are, uh, they are encrypted over, over, this, uh, over this tunnel. And there are two different kinds of routing which are supported here. Uh, one is static routing, when you configure a router to send uh, traffic for particular destinations in pre-configured directions, and the other is BGP, uh, dynamic routing, uh, which, uh, which where we use a routing protocol like BGP to figure out what paths traffic should take. It used to happen that OCI only supported static routing for a while, uh, but now we support both static and dynamic routing, and I'll show this in, in, the, in the demo when we go into the demo. Now, IPsec, when you talk about there are two modes. One is called a transport mode, where IPsec in, encrypts and authenticates only the actual payload of the packet, and the header header information stays intact. Uh, the other mode is called the tunnel mode, which we talked about here, where IPsec encrypts and authenticates the entire packet. After encryption, the packet is then encapsulated to form a new IP packet that has different header information. Now, in our case, uh, in case of OCI, we only support tunnel mode. 
uh, we don't support uh, transport mode right so if this exam comes up in the exam or something just remember that okay it supports uh, tunnel mode uh, and not the transport mode uh, well that was the the, the basics of uh, uh, of VPN. Let's look at some other details. We, uh, as you recall from the previous module, we did look into this uh, gateway called a dynamic routing gateway. So anytime you have your on-prem environment and you want to connect to the on-prem environment, let's say you have a database running here, you would use uh, this gateway in OCI called a dynamic routing gateway. So it's a virtual router that is sitting at the edge and it provides a path between your private subnets and your on-prem environment. So think about this as any situations where you want to connect other than internet, uh, you, would use, uh, you would use a DRG. Now, DRG is used both for VPN as well as fast connect. So both these options are actually supported on, on DRG and we'll look into this as we get into more uh, details in, in the demo. After attaching a DRG, you must add a route for the DRG in the VCN's route table to enable traffic flow. This is pretty standard. We saw this earlier in the VCN uh, module. Uh, if you don't add this route, uh, there's the packets here get black hole. They have no way to figure out that they have to go to on premises through this gateway here, right? So you, you have to add this route. Uh, and then, uh, of course, you can have security list or network security groups here uh, to secure your uh, to secure your uh, subnets and your um, resources running in them. DRG is a standalone object. So you, you create it separately and then you must attach it to a VCN. VCN and DRG have one to one relationship. It means one VCN can only have a, one DRG and one DRG can be attached to only a single VCN uh, at a time. So let's look at some of these uh, details on the VPN Connect uh, feature itself. Uh, like I said uh, earlier, VPN Connect is a managed VPN service which securely connects your on-prem environments to, to OCI VCN uh, through an IPsec v, uh, VPN connection. Uh, VPN Connect ensures secure remote connectivity via standard industry standard uh, uh, IPsec uh, encryption. Bandwidth is dependent on the customer's access to the internet and general internet congestion. Uh, typically we have seen the bandwidths can be much higher, but uh, the whole idea of uh, using a VPN connect is to run proof of concepts, right? If you have any uh, requirements around running enterprise apps, our guidance is to use fast connect and not use uh, VPN connect. Uh, VPN Connect is offered for free, so there is no charge for using the service. And uh, like I said, customer proof of concepts usually start as a VPN, and then they morph into Fast Connect designs as you move into uh, as you move into uh, production environments. Now, important thing to keep in mind: OCI provisions redundant VPN tunnels located on physically and logically isolated tunnel endpoints. So what we do is coming out of DRG, you get two different tunnels here, and we manage those tunnels on physically and logically uh, redundant uh, hardware. So it's not like the tunnels are running on the same hardware and just the hardware goes down, the tunnels go down. The whole idea of having these redundant tunnels is that you get some kind of uh, high availability, right? And we manage that on, on our side, uh, but it's our practice. We give you two tunnels and is our um, recommendation for you to use both tunnels. Now, when I go into the demo, I'll show, um, I'll, I'll just provision one tunnel but just for the lack of time, but you can actually uh, see that we, we provide uh, two tunnels when you create the IPsec connection. Now, how does this whole thing work? <clears throat> well, um, let me just run this uh, animation here. So first thing here is you have your on-prem environment, right? And we have this particular address space. In fact, I'll be using the same address space in my demo. Uh, in, the first thing important thing to, to notice on on-prem environment is you have this thing called CPE object. CPE object is the virtual representation of the actual network device, which some people call CPE, customer premises equipment, which dominates the IPsec tunnel. It could be a router, it could be a firewall, or it could be a virtual appliance supporting IPsec running on premises, right? And you have a long list of devices here, which, which are available on our, on our uh, documentation page and the configuration for those devices, the supported devices, right? Uh, and so there's a good chance whatever devices you are running today uh, would be supported by the OCI uh, VPN Connect service. Right here is the internet, it's the unsecured channel, uh, and you want to connect your, your uh, resources running here, let's say I'm running a database here, to your on-prem environment using the VPN. So, so, so what you do is you create this tunnel 
as we talked about in the previous uh, previous slides and you can use either static routing or dynamic routing uh, and then your resources are here uh, and you create this uh, drg and of course you have to do the route table so the packets can go from from here to the drg and you also create your network security group or security list to secure your subnets uh, or your instances right so this is the pretty standard setup uh, in the previous module we looked into here we had uh, internet gateway we had nat gateway uh, and then we went to the to the to the internet using using those gateways right in this case we are going through a drg and then we are going to an on prem environment right not just sitting and so going out to the internet so how does this whole thing work uh, well there are a bunch of steps here uh, and it's actually rather straightforward uh, but let me just quickly run through the steps here right first thing you do is create a virtual cloud network pretty straightforward uh, we have seen that in the previous uh, lecture series on vcn then we create a drg we have not created a drg until now but we'll go and do that you have to attach your drg to your vcn right remember they they have a one to one relationship and drg and vcn are standalone so you, once you create it you have to attach it here uh, then you have to attach your route table uh, to send the traffic to the to the drg then you create a cpu object which is your on prem uh, which is basically a virtual representation of your on prem router and you would get this ip address running from your router here right so your whatever router you are running here will have an ip public ip address and there are things like if your cpu is behind a nat device what to do and all that it gets into more complex details which we will cover in our level 200 module but you this cp device basically will have a public ip address so you, so you create the cp object in oci and you add the public ip address then on the drg you create your ipsec uh, tunnels uh, so you create these ipsec tunnels here and then uh, between cp and drg and you could choose to use a static route or you could choose to use a bgp route right so you could decide what kind of routing i want right now you can see there's a static route here and then the last step is you configure your on premises cp router so i'm going to run through these steps uh, in the next uh, module where we will uh, will run through these steps and i will show you uh, a tunnel being created and uh, the ipsec tunnels being uh, provisioned so thank you for uh, joining this uh, lecture if you have time please join me in the next next lecture where we'll talk about uh, the uh, vpn connect demo thank you